Welcome to another episode of Rock the Boat with Richard Hagen here on Yachting International Radio, your weekly dose of international boating industry news and opinions. Super Yacht brokerage Denison Yachting has listed a Crescent 117 Super Yacht for sale in Seattle. That's not particularly newsworthy in and of itself, but what is interesting about this listing is that the owner is prepared to accept cryptocurrency as payment for the yacht. Denison Yachting said in a statement that it foresaw this happening some time ago, and so it already had the technology in place to facilitate sales transactions in cryptocurrency. According to the brokerage, crypto is already offered as a medium for real estate sales and therefore it was only natural that super yacht sales should eventually follow. The owner of this Crescent 117 has listed it at a price of 396 bitcoins but will accept payment in bitcoin, ethereum or dogecoin. If you're interested and you have enough crypto in your account you can look forward to a yacht that is still brand new. Its interior is described as bright and contemporary and it features a country kitchen, a jacuzzi on the sun deck, a full beam master stateroom and enough accommodation for 10 guests across five cabins. There's also space for five crew. The yacht has a cruising speed of 20 knots and a maximum speed of about 25 knots. Australian boat builder Dongara Marine has shown off a brand new rigid inflatable boat that it has built for the Western Australian government. The boat you see here is called the Cape Rose and it's a specialist sea rescue craft based at Marine Rescue in Shark Bay. Cape Rose is an 8.3 meter boat built on a deep V aluminium hull. It's been designed for maximum interior volume and it can accommodate three crew on shockwave suspension seats. The electronics on board are quite spectacular. There's a set of Simrad plotters linked to Simrad radar, a FLIR thermal camera system, an Ocean LED Eyes HD Gen 2 high definition underwater camera, an Iridium satellite phone and a Sulfire mobile phone repeater. On deck there's a heavy duty tow post, fold down ladders on either side for easy access to and from the water and a solid canopy for protection from the elements. The hull is designed to sit deep in the water for maximum stability and enhanced sea keeping. Power for the boat comes from twin Yamaha F200 outboards. These feature fly-by-wire electronic throttles and hydraulic steering. Apparently this setup yielded an impressive top speed of 38 knots during sea trials. Cape Rose has been so well received that Dongaro Marine says that it has since landed firm contracts to build another three similar ribs, one of which is similar in size to Cape Rose and the other two being larger. IBM has launched a self-driving boat called the Mayflower Autonomous Ship and it has set off on an attempt to cross the Atlantic Ocean all on its own. The Mayflower Autonomous Ship or MAZ 400 as it's known is now in international waters after departing from Turnchapel Wharf in Plymouth this past week. With no crew on board, the boat uses various IBM automation, AI and other computing technologies to continuously assess its status, its environment and its mission to make decisions about what to do next whilst at sea. The journey is expected to take about three weeks and if it's successful, the Maz 400 will arrive in Provincetown, Massachusetts before making its way to the US port of Plymouth. But what is the point? IBM says that Maz 400 is intended to demonstrate an affordable platform for gathering ocean data about key ocean health issues like acidification, microplastics and conservation. One of the tools on board that makes this research possible has the coolest sounding name, Hypertaste. It's an electronic tongue that was developed by IBM Research. In addition, Maz 400 will assist in the development of fully autonomous AI systems and applications in industries like shipping, oil and gas, telecoms, defense, fishing and aquaculture. Michelin. Now there's a name you wouldn't normally associate with boating and shipping, right? Well, that might all be about to change. The company has unveiled a new technology that it calls Wasamo or Wing Sail Mobility Project and it's fascinating and ambitious in equal parts. Wasamo is basically a massive inflatable sail fitted to a telescopic frame. It's designed to allow all types of vessels, from cargo ships to pleasure craft, to benefit from wind power. 
The first Busamo wing will be installed on a commercial ship next year and after completion of testing will go into production. According to Michelin, the Wasamo system can be adapted to work on virtually any kind of vessel and can either be fitted during the building of a new vessel or retrofitted on existing vessels. The wings are also retractable to ensure that ships using the system can pass under bridges and other structures. On the subject of names that we wouldn't normally associate with the sea, he has another one for you, Enzo. Most of us would associate that name with Ferrari and you'd be right. Enzo Ferrari of course founded the Italian supercar manufacturer, but now there's also a brand new superyacht of the same name. This week, German superyacht manufacturer Lursen launched the 115 meter long superyacht Enzo and it's so spectacular that I had to include it in this episode. The yacht features naval architecture by Lursen and interior and exterior styling by Italian design studio Nuvolari Lenard who says the yacht's design is inspired by the LaFerrari supercar. It has six decks all built around the owner's requirement for having quote a healthy and family focused life on board unquote. There's a unique two deck owner's suite and numerous other sports and other activities on offer. This includes a large gym on the sky lounge deck and a spacious wellness area on the lower deck. That's super yacht jargon for a spa which means a couple of saunas, massage areas and whatever else you find on a super yacht spa. I don't know, I'm a writer, not a super yacht owner. In further proof that the rich don't care about pandemics, it's been revealed that the nearly 5,000 ton, 115 meter long Enzo is this owner's second yacht from Lursen. The first one he owned was an 86 meter yacht, which he was apparently so impressed with that he simply had to have a much larger yacht built by the exact same teams who built the last one. Wow. Oh, and just for the record, no, this yacht probably isn't owned by Enzo Ferrari's son Piero. Piero already owns several yachts all built by the Ferretti group in which Ferrari owns a significant stake. So the super yacht Enzo is probably owned by just another Ferrari fan. Well that's it for this week's news, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. For those of you who don't know, when I'm not making these videos, I'm a marketing copywriter specializing in working with the boating and marine industry. I offer professional blogs, email marketing, product descriptions, website content and anything else you need to be written up. Contact me on my website at richardhagen.com or via LinkedIn to set up a quick call. I'd really love to hear from you. All of my details are in the description. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next week.